Asking for a Friend, The Law You Need to Know, by ButlerFirm.com. If you work for long in the field of personal injury, you learn that nursing homes can be scary places. Nursing homes are supposed to be where we put people who are vulnerable and need help and where they live out the golden years of their lives. And some nursing homes are like that. There are nursing homes out there that take great care of the people who live there. But there are others who don't. There are others who become so motivated to seek greater profits that they won't spend the money that they need to spend to take care of their own patients. And really bad things can happen when that occurs. Today we'll talk with Xavier Carter, a friend of mine for a long time. Xavier specializes in this area. He handles a lot of nursing home cases. He's got some great results and some big verdicts. He's seen some pretty troubling things. He's handled cases where patients became dehydrated, severely dehydrated because the nursing home wasn't even giving them enough water. He's dealt with cases where patients were repeatedly bitten by ants because the nursing home was in such poor condition. So today we'll talk with him about those things, about his practice, and about what you can do if you or a loved one has been at a nursing home and has suffered elder abuse. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, tell us who you are and what your practice is. Sure, Jeb. Thanks so much for having me here. I really appreciate it. My name is Xavier Carter. Uh, I'm an attorney at the law firm of Watkins, Lurie, Rawl, and Chance. And my practice uh, primarily consists of uh, complex uh, plaintiff's personal injury law. Um, that includes um, a particular specialty with regard to medical malpractice and nursing home negligence. Mm -hmm. um, includes trucking cases or any, any uh, uh, premises liability, any case in which someone is, is catastrophically injured or in, in a lot of our a lot of cases, unfortunately, um, uh, clients are, 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 are deceased and, and so wrongful death cases. Sure. Um, is, is in your practice in particular, is, is nursing home something that you focused on? Yeah, well, yeah, a significant, a significant portion of my uh, kind of personal docket uh, relates to nursing home litigation and cases in which uh, someone has, has been treated poorly uh, in a nursing home or an assisted living facility or other type of long-term care facility. Sure. Well, that's what I want to ask you about today, and I want to hit you with a little bit of a fastball to start. And that's this idea that I think a lot of people have. I mean, taking care of older people is not easy. I mean, there's, their bodies are declining. Um, they can be sometimes maybe not easy to deal with. Sometimes their families aren't easy to deal with. And we have these people who aren't getting paid that much, working really hard to take care of these folks, and here you are suing them. What's that about? Yeah, that's a that's a good that's a good point, Jeb, and that's a good question. And uh, the way we kind of view it is, because um, the, the 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 one point you made is, oftentimes you've got really good people uh, within the facility uh -huh. who, are, who are trying to do their best to take care of, of these individuals, take care of our, our senior population. Uh, but they are put in such a poor position uh, by the corporations uh, that generally and typically run these nursing homes and long-term care facilities. Uh, uh, that relate to understaffing, just not giving them the resources and the time that they need to give the care that these, that our older, that our elder population really needs to kind of thrive in their later years. And so we don't view it as we're suing the people who are taking care of, uh, 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 of our senior population. Uh, we view it as we're suing uh, the larger, usually the larger corporation that is filling to give those individuals, those caretakers, on what they need to take care of, take care of our loved ones. Well, so who's in charge then? It, 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 when, in the nursing homes that you've, I guess, encountered yes. in litigation, I mean, who's really running the show? Is it, is it the, the doctor who's supposed to be the medical director? Is it the nurses? Is it some off-site you know, corporation run by you know, dudes in gray suits. Yeah, that's a, that, that's a great point. So most of the times it's, it's, it's really being run from the gray suits, right? Mm. In, a, in a far off corporation, you've got the, the nursing home facility that's there kind of on the ground and they've got an administrator or an executive director who is oftentimes and usually reporting to someone that's in a larger corporation, maybe a- What do you mean reporting to? reporting to in the sense that their boss is uh, this the regional director or the district director for such and such um, uh -huh. who reports on up to 
uh, uh, the senior vice president of such and such who reports on up to the CEO of such and such, and you've got this, this larger corporation who is extracting value in a number of different ways um, from the facilities that are there on the ground supposedly taking care of, 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 our, of our elder population. I have not ever heard this phrase, but I'm interested in it, extracting value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me what that means. Yeah, so, you know, uh, you, you mentioned earlier that it takes a lot to, um, to, to take care of the senior population, and the government typically mm -hmm. pays for a lot of that, right? And so um, our government has come in and said, hey, we're, we, you know, we, we like the nursing home set up. We will pay, uh, we will pay people to, to run these nursing homes, and we will uh, uh, reimburse for cer certain types of services provided. And so uh, these larger corporations understand how the reimbursement is working, how the payment structure is working, mm -hmm. and they they charge for the various services that are being provided to the individuals on the ground. And what I mean by extracting value mm -hmm. is the larger corporation is finding all of the ways that it can charge for services that are being provided, and even if they are not providing those services, sometimes we see uh, that, that they will bill for, and they will extract the value from the lower level from the on, on the ground facility up to some parent corporation or some consulting company that's that's also owned by the parent corporation and, 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 and things of that nature. So money comes in yep. through the patient insurance, which is usually the government. That's right. And that'd be like Medicare most of the time, Medicare, I guess. Medicaid, sometimes Tricare, various you know uh, 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 government payment forms. Sometimes it's private insurance. Um, so various various payment sources, but lots of times with 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 our with our elder population, it's it's Medicare, Medicaid. Okay, so so um, money comes in to the nursing home where, say, my grandmother lives, and is the money most of the time staying there in that facility, no. or is it moving? What what you laughing at? Where's no, it, where's no, it going? No, it's it, it, I laugh because uh, Jeff, uh, uh, it, it, it's. Oftentimes control so much. I, I thought when you said that, I thought of a particular case that we had um, where the on the ground nursing facility um, had a bank account, right? Okay. And the administrator for the bank account for the for the facility, uh, which is the, the top person in the facility that's on the ground taking care of grandma, mm -hmm. she she had no control over the bank account. So if she wanted to buy a new bed or a new piece of equipment for uh, uh, someone in her facility, she had to ask the corporation up above, the corporation that was somewhere else, mm. uh, to stroke a check or, or, or make a payment to, and, and just had no control over the bank account itself. So uh, every night the funds would sweep out of the bank account for the on the ground facility, along with the other 20 or 30 or 40 facilities around the state or around the country, the money would sweep out from that bank account into the bank account of the larger corporation and so how much of it would sweep out oh we're talking you know thousands and hundreds of hundreds of thousands of dollars and it's going straight up straight up to to to, to the parent corporation who's controlling you know, controlling costs at, at, at every 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 level and pushing down the facility you know we see emails all the time where the emphasis and focus is on control costs control staffing um, and it, it really has an impact on patient care. It really does. Controlling cost. Do you see, um, I'm going to use a big word that I learned in school. I hope I use it right. Do you see a, wait for it, dichotomy between concern over controlling cost and concern about taking care of patients, on the other hand? There is a dichotomy. Oh, yeah. between <laughs> Tell me about this dichotomy, Xavier. <laughs> Right, and so the biggest cost for a nursing home or long-term care facility is typically in its staff. Mm -hmm. right? The people that come in and take care of grandma and grandpa and, and mommy and dad, right? And what is, what is often required for someone who's at that stage of life is kind of hands-on care to help them get dressed, help them get bathed, help them get fed, all those things, right? Well, you need people to do that, right? You need people who can spend quality time, significant time with that individual to do all those things. Mm -hmm. Well, that costs money. 
right? Right. And that, that costs money. So the more individuals you have doing that and the more time that they're spending doing that, your costs are increasing. And what we often see, is, but that's what you need. That's what you need to, to, to take care of someone, provide someone who's in that condition the level of care that they need. And in fact, that's what we think we're getting when we put mom and grandma in that facility. Right. But the dichotomy is for the corporation that is trying to, again, extract value, uh -huh. right? The, 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 the more they can keep those costs down, right, those labor costs down, mm -hmm. the more profit they can extract, right? And so um, uh, that, that's generally what we see. And, 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 and when they're focused on keeping costs down from, the, from a labor perspective, or also, you know, oftentimes uh, there's different types of equipment that are needed. Right? Sure. Different yeah. type of treatment and services that are needed. And if they can control the cost of, say, hey, don't order too many supplies or too many uh, 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 mattresses or support services that can address that wound uh, or address those wounds that are developing, to the extent they can keep that stuff down, they can extract, again, more value for the corporation and for the people at the top. Those people at the top make the money that comes in from the government and the insurance minus what they spend. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be the profit is, I guess. Yeah. More lessons in economics coming next episode. Um, all right. So, I mean, Xavier, are all nursing homes run by people? Are, I should ask it this way. Are all nursing homes places where value is extracted and no one cares about patients? Or are there some good ones out there? Yeah, of course. Right, right, of course. Yeah, to course. which one? Huh? Yes, to which? They're all bad or there's some good <laughs> Right, that's a good point. I find myself doing that in depositions all the time. Okay, okay. Yeah, there, there, there are, you know, some, you know, some decent ones out there and it, it can be, it can be, it can be difficult to find those, right? And, and so the trick is how do we find them? I was, there was an article a couple of weeks ago from the New York Times um, uh, about uh, there's a, a rating system called Five Star Rating System, hmm. and it's about how some of these larger corporations uh, have uh, uh, found ways to manipulate the Five Star Rating System so that when you are looking for a place to put your loved ones, you say, "Oh, this is a five star facility. It's five out of five. They figure out how to manipulate the process uh, so that it looks like they're a great facility, but uh, and, and they do things. Um, uh, aesthetically to make it look like it's a great facility even when you come and visit um, but uh, you know oftentimes the care is just not there so what do I what should I do if if I've got a loved one in a nursing home facility and I'm starting to suspect that not everything is as it ought to be yeah the, the, the best thing that you can do uh, and to the extent you can do it is to be an advocate for your loved one right what does that mean yeah, you want to visit as often as possible, right? If they know that someone is going to be there, um, that they're, they're going to have to report to, then, you know, if, 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 if mom is here and, and her neighbor over here is not having a visitor, uh, and this, this staffer who is uh, facing this dichotomy that we talked about earlier, yeah, sure. is figuring out who's going to spend more time with, Right, well, if, 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 if neighbor's family isn't coming to visit, but mom's family is, then they're gonna spend a little bit more time with mom's family, with, with, with mom, and make sure that she's clean. Because and, and otherwise they might get caught. That's right, they're, 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 they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to. And so advocate with the, with the caretakers, they're you know, hands on day to day, advocate with the administrator in the facility. And if you think things still are not going right, here in Georgia, we have a state ombudsman. Most most people, most states do. A state what? Ombudsman. What is that? It's a silk. It's a it's a it's a, a fancy word for someone in the state that's charged with making sure nursing home facilities are are treating people fairly, right? And so, oh, okay. you reach out to the state ombudsman and say, hey, this is what's going on. Now, a lot of times, oftentimes, those offices are kind of understaffed and under resourced and just don't have the ability uh, to 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 investigate every claim. But at least you're starting to make a record and. If even failing that, you, you, you think it's worse than that. If you suspect mm -hmm. abuse or, or the neglect is such that um, uh, mom or grandma is really in a bad situation, you, 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 you might want to look into uh, finding, 
find a legal representation, someone that can do something about it. Are there steps that someone should take to like preserve evidence or is it, yeah, I, yeah. maybe even from your perspective? Yeah, that's a great point. That's yeah. a great point, Jeff. Um, take notes, right? Take, take, take notes uh, of what you're seeing, what you're documenting. Okay. Take pictures. You know, one of the things we often yeah. see, um, we often see um, uh, uh, pressure wounds uh, and pressure sores from, from uh, it, 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 pressure sores develop when care is not being provided. Uh, you know, mom, grandma is not being turned as often as they should, not being gotten up out of the bed and exercise and things like that. Um, and these pressures, you know, the word pressure sores, I was like, oh, it's just a, you know, a small, these pressure sores can get really, really bad and really, really gnarly to look at. If you um, Google them, you'll find some pretty disturbing images, pretty I think. Pretty disturbing images. It, it sounds uh, not as bad as it, it really can be, right? And if, if that is developing and you see that happening, take pictures um, because those that's, that's what can really um, uh, um, drive a case to or drive a facility if you can show hey this is what's happening to my mom this is what happened to my my grandfather right you can you can you can really you have a visual depiction of what, what's going on in that facility and, and, and it helps us to do our jobs it helps us to uh, do something about it yeah so what are some of the typical challenges that if you're handling a nursing home case for a client I mean mm -hmm. what do you face in most of these most of the cases um, well, one challenge is, you know, the loved one who has been uh, mistreated is often no longer here because... Um, can't tell the story. They can't tell the story. They can't tell the story uh, about what happened to them because they're no longer here because the care was so poor that they developed sepsis from a really bad pressure wound and now and, 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 and their fragile bodies just couldn't take it anymore and they're no longer here to tell the story. Further, you know, even when they're be, being treated poorly, a lot of them have dementia, right? And the facilities know that they have dementia. And so some of that poor care comes from uh, them not being able, able to advocate for themselves while they're here. Mm -hmm. uh, other challenges include, um, we know oftentimes uh, that the understaffing is taking place, that the care providers... Who are understaffing, just not enough people hired to do the work? Not enough people hired to do the work. Okay. Right? The, the people who are there having to take care of 15, 16... Uh, uh, patients on any particular given shift. Uh, uh, so, you know, a lot of times our best witnesses are finding those those people who maybe are no longer at that facility who can talk about what it was like at that facility during that time. That's a challenge. Well, what do they say? I mean, when you find someone like that, what kind of things do you hear? Oh, oh Jeff, you hear all kinds of stuff. I couldn't, you know, I, I, I didn't have time to turn and reposition people. I often hear call lights and because I was taking care of this person, um, their call lights would just stay on for, you know. What's a call I, light? call light is, hey, I need help. Oh, sort of like an airplane, you hit the button and it just calls Correct. the um, flight attendant. And even, even such, you know, such disturbing things as um, we didn't have enough uh, uh, adult diapers in the facility, so sometimes we would, you know, we would stick towels in the adult diapers so that uh, it would help with how wet they, so they would soak up uh, some of the wetness so that... You Good know, Lord, you know, I ain't even heard of that. Yeah, no, it, it can be really bad, right? So, and yeah. it goes back to the cost that kind of thing that we were talking about earlier, right? They Jeez. just didn't put enough uh, supplies in the facility to take care of this person. And so we, that, those are some of our best witnesses in some of our cases. Do you, of our cases. Do you find that it, it, it's good people Yes. In a bad situation? Yes. 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 How does that affect them? Them being the witnesses that you talked to, the former employees who were trying to do good work but didn't have the resources they need in order to do it? Jeff, people don't like to feel like um, their jobs don't matter, right? Yeah. People want to feel like okay. if you're in that, if you're taking care of an older person, eight, nine times out of ten is because you have a heart to do that. Right? Mm -hmm. And so, it, it, it's a hard job, you know, taking care of older people. Um, and so if you're in that industry, if you're in that field, it's because you have a heart to do it generally, right? And so when someone doesn't give you the resources uh, that you need to do that, it can be heartbreaking. And it's really frustrating for them to want to take care of these people. 
um, to to look at somebody that you look at as your, like a grandmother or that you know that you know that 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 school teacher that meant so much to you and not be able to give them the care that you know that they deserve because someone is making a decision above your head to not give you the resources you need. And so yeah, it, oftentimes, most of the times, we see good people who are in a bad situation. Man. Well, we're gonna run short of time, uh, Zavier, I'll end with one sort of final topic. Um, when you have a client who um, lost a loved one in a nursing home, sort of what do you need through the course of the litigation from your client? Um, well, the first thing um, that you need is to not beat yourself up. You know, Jim, oftentimes hmm. we're dealing with a situation uh, where someone has put their loved one in a long-term care facility. Uh, there's a lot of guilt associated with that, right? And then when it turns out poorly, that just multiplies. That multiplies. Yeah. Wow. And I so thought about that. You got to forgive yourself, and not. And it's, it's not your fault. And understand that it's not your fault. Um, and have some patience. But we're going to advocate for you, um, and on your behalf to make sure that that the system improves. And, and that's what we're trying to do is to improve the system, and that someone's held accountable for, you know, what has happened to your loved one. But, you know, don't beat yourself up. Don't. Uh, 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 go through life thinking that this happened to your loved one because of something that you did because it's not your fault and so that that's that's the primary thing um, that I would that I would tell someone who's going through a situation like this is don't 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 beat yourself up because it's not your fault thank you Xavier appreciate it Jim great talk uh, I have something I want to do just a video just in case you edit this because this is so key when you talk about nursing home cases Maybe you want to ask him about, sometimes people think, well, gosh, that person was 90 years old. Yeah. What did that work? That they were going to die anyway, defense. Right. And then yeah. they, Xavier and Lance both speak so eloquently on it. Might not be about, you, I don't want to put the words in your mouth, but. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tee it up for you. Yeah. Um, we're still rolling? Still rolling. All right. Um, well, Xavier, I think some people wonder about nursing home litigation. I mean, the people who go into nursing home aren't aren't doing well anyway. I mean, that's why they're there. I mean, is, if if something bad happens, I mean, if they ultimately pass away, like it, I don't mean to be rude about it, but I think some folks wonder, wasn't that going to happen anyway? Yeah, Jeff. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, and most of the times, these people are in there because they got a lot of they have a lot of health problems, right? Okay, and they are oftentimes towards the end of their life. Yeah. Right? But this is still somebody's mama. This is still somebody's daddy, grandmama. And they deserve in their final years, in their final days, in their final months, or whatever time period that is, to live with dignity. Right? That is they have they have the right to live and to even die with dignity. And when you see some of the things that we see uh, uh, in the facilities, the thing that hurts uh, the people who are left behind the most is the sense that their loved one uh, was not treated with dignity and that there was nothing they could do about it. And so what we are doing and what we are trying to advocate for is to improve the system, this care, this care system, so that all of our loved ones, and even us one day, can live out our days with dignity and respect um, and, 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 and to, to, to leave here in a way that is becoming of the way that we live. And that's what we're, we're trying to do. It's a powerful answer. Thanks, sir. Thanks for joining us on Asking for a Friend, the law you need to know. Find us online at www.butlerfirm.com.